What's up, guys? Phil here with Transfer Superstars. We are at the Impressions Show 2024 in Long Beach. I'm with Marco here from MNR. We stopped by the MNR booth because we saw the Quattro. It is blue. You guys definitely recognize this from the show. We're going to talk a little bit about the bells and whistles about this machine and how this is changing the DTF world. Perfect. That works out well. All right. Any questions we can start off with that you have? Yeah, so this is a forehead uh, DTF printer. Correct. It's a forehead machine. So we have two CMYK heads, which are mirrored CMYK heads. And then we have the two white heads that sit directly in front of it. Oh, great. And I believe Bruce has earlier said this was released around November. Yeah, so we did a soft show showing with it at a trade show in last September. Nobody knew we had it. Caused a big stir in the community. Then we actually brought it out to Printing Unite in October back in Atlanta. It's our first show releasing it. And this is now our second show. And it is, uh, it is definitely stirring up the DT world, DTF world. Nice. I mean, just looking at it right away, it is blue. It definitely attracts you. You know it's an m and product. Um, some of the things that I noticed right away is that the electrical, there's only one plug. Yeah, exactly. Can you tell me a little bit about that. So, yes, we want to do it's a UOMC certified machine, which is going to be a very big thing because most of the other printers out there are not. So what we've actually done is we take the power to the printer, we run it through the machine, and we actually connect it into the power box over here, and then we just have the one single power source that's going to go directly to your wall. Powers everything. Yeah, this other than the one computer. Unit. It's all one unit. That's so the machine it. does ship as two separate units, okay. but one of the biggest issues that the industry has had is fill tracking because your printers will eventually walk. Yes. So what we do on the installs, we actually put a plate down here. It's a big deal, and it actually makes the two units into one unit, and you never have to worry about your tracking again. So you don't have any dog walking? Nothing along those lines. Everything straight from everything the runs. beginning of the print? All, all the way to the back, all the way to the front. Yep. Nice. Very nice. Is there a heating plate to this? I yeah, so in the front right here, there is a heating element. Okay. There is two of them. There's one in the rear, one in the front. We just utilize the front work because that's all we need for application. And we wanted it at about 60 degrees Celsius. And what that does is it just heats up the ink enough to kind of gel it and set it. Mm -hmm. So that way, as it comes through the loop, it comes into our powder box over here and gets into the powder, which is going to be your, um, your adhesive. Mm -hmm. You don't have a ton of ink on there, so you have just enough powder sticking to it for what you need. Got it. And I know there's a lot of buzz about machines having powder recirculation and yep. all that stuff, but I know that it also causes some clumping. Exactly. And it, sometimes it doesn't move straight and it, it causes all type of problems. Yep. So what type of system does this have? So ours is 100% manual. We had talked about doing an automated system with an auger and things like that, but you're definitely correct with that. Um, in the industry, people are having the augers, they're locking up, they're getting hot, they're clumping up, and they're burning out motors and they can't use them anyway. So for right now, we actually have our catch tray right here. And as the machine shakes, you are going to have a little bit of excess powder that's going to fall into it. And in order for me to release it or bring it back up to the top, I would just open my door here. I would slide this out. And the nice thing is, is when I do slide this out, there's a sensor down there that stops the shaking. Oh, nice. I don't have to worry about any of my powder falling to the floor. Awesome. So then I would just go ahead and dump it back into the hopper box up on top, slide my tray back in and continuously print. Now, when you do that also, I don't have to stop printing or anything along those lines. The machine can get continuously print while that's happening. Well, that's clean. Yeah. So I noticed there's two chambers. Yes. So, so the second one, you know, by default is used as a, like, a second catch chamber. Okay. Well, we don't need a second catch chamber. So I actually use it for a little bit of storage. I've got an extra core in there. I've got scissors in there. I've got my taper when I actually have to go ahead tape the roll back up to a new core. So I just keep that down there. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And uh, is this a two head or a four head? Oh, it's a four, oh, head, a four head. Yeah, it's a four head system. And I noticed that the wipers, yes. individual wipers. Single wipers, now? which is really nice too. So it helps wipe the heads a little bit better. I also don't have to worry about the wipers going all the way across the head plate where I've got no, no need to wipe them. So when the uh, when the wipers actually get activated, the print carriage or the, the, the capping station moves up and down. There's no side to side movement but it raises up to the white point and then the print carriers will wipe across and the wipers just wipe the print head. That's it. Mm. So they don't scrape across the head plate or anything along those lines. Okay, good. And what other uh, sensors does this have? So we've got two film feed sensors. We have one in the back there and we have one down here that actually read into each other. So as the machine's running and it's reading film, it'll continuously feed film into the machine so that I can go back and forth and print. Then as it prints, we were talking about earlier, it comes down through this loop over here and there's a film feed sensor that'll actually read that loop. So as long as that's reading film, my dryer belt's gonna continuously move. But in order to keep proper tension throughout the entire system, as that loop rises, the film sensor stops. Okay. And when it reads no more film, it'll stop the belt for a short amount of time, allow that loop to lower itself down, and then continuously pick itself up after that. The nice thing is though, is we have a feature right here called link. Mm -hmm. And the link feature will actually go ahead and it'll override those two sensors. So when you get to the end of your roll of film, a lot of people 
you know, have to leave about 10 feet or so of film yep. at the backsides, they can't utilize. We don't have to utilize, we don't have to leave that much film in the backside. We can shorten that up dramatically. And what we end up doing, we print a lot closer to the edge of the film. And then what we do is we go ahead and turn on link. And what it does is it overrides the sensors. So as the tail of your film comes through everything and it bypasses those sensors, it'll still feed through the powder box, through the dryer, and cure frop. Wow, you utilize almost all, all of the it. film. Exactly. There's great. very little waste, waste in the backside of it. Good. And talking about waste, yes. does this vent anywhere, or how does that venting work? So we have a HEPA filter over here. So your exhaust, the majority of it is going to go through that filter box over there. There's a charcoal filter first that gets the majority of everything. And there's a paper filter on top of that. And then what comes out of the uh, fans on top is good, clean air. Then you are still going to have a little bit of vapors coming out of the front and back of the dryer. And that's just going to be some of your water particles that are coming out of the inks that are going to ventilate out. But we do recommend customers putting it in a ventilated world. Okay. That's as far as the charcoal thing. filter, how often do they need to change uh, that? Right now, we're looking at about every three months, it seems okay. like. Um, it's still a very new product, so there's certain little things that we're looking at right now. But as it sits right now, about every three months for that. Okay. And yeah. also, a big question that everybody has yep. is maintenance. So how does the maintenance look on this machine? The maintenance is very simple. It is a digital machine, so you are going to have maintenance. So at the end of the day, what you're going to go ahead and do is you are going to clean the wiper blades off. You're going to clean the gaskets around each of the individual caps. It's a very quick process. You're also going to go over there and you're going to inspect the bottom of the headlight. You're just going to make sure that there's no ink built up on anywhere or anything hanging down, especially on the whiting side because it does dry rather quick once it's out of the print head. But once that's done, you're going to put a little bit of solution in each one of the caps and wet cap it. That's the end of it. At the end of the week, you're going to do the same thing, but then you'll actually end up, you'll open up your, your vent door over there, you'll open up the dryer hood over here, and you'll just clean up any excess areas that might have some, you know, residue on it. You'll inspect your filters. Um, if there's any buildup anywhere in some of the fans, you're going to go ahead and want to wipe that stuff down as well. All in all, at the end of the week, it takes about 15, 20 minutes. It's a very quick process, as long as you stay on top of it. So not too bad at all? No, not at all. So one of the things, like so something happens on the printer, something might go wrong, yep. they need to replace a print head and yep. all that good stuff. How easy or hard is it to access the print heads? Um, so to get to the print, it's extremely simple, but one of the nice things about this machine is, is that because it's an m &R product, if something were to happen to your machine, you call us, we're going to be your service department, and we'll answer your questions, we'll troubleshoot with you. Um, we will try to have you repair the machine if need be, and, but if not, we will dispatch one of our technicians, our Quattro guys out, and they'll come out and do the repair for you guys. Great, great. I mean, we, we've had your products for screen printing for quite a few years, mm -hmm. and you guys come out to us. Yep. We'll, we'll it's, it's, a, it's the same thing with all of our digital products right here. Okay. And again, with this machine too, because everything is very simple to work on, um, we are working on trying to do and have customers be as hands-on as possible, but there are just going to be certain things that we would rather have a technician come out and go ahead and replace for you guys. Oh, great. And um, lastly, yep. what's the cost of this? Where can they find it? And uh, is there, what's the lead time currently? And what's the warranty as well? Um, so the cost of it's gonna, you know, you're gonna have to talk to your local sales sure. person about that. Lead time right now, I believe is about a month. Okay. Um, but with this show going on, the machine's been extremely popular. That lead time's gonna stretch out a, a full a lot with this. Yeah, as, as more orders get by exactly. on this Exactly, and then your warranty, you get a standard one year warranty. Printheads will not be included with the warranty, um, but you get a standard one year warranty on your farts and your labor. Um, anything past 30 days, you just pay out of pocket. The technician will come out and take care of you guys. Same thing with all the other equipment that we offer. And do you guys recommend buying parts for this? Uh, so we as well? do offer a, a, a product called an uptime kit. Okay. The uptime kit holds about 90% of the parts for this machine. There's just a few small items like higher end parts, like a print head, um, and a couple of the boards that really you shouldn't have to be replacing that don't come with it. But everything that may go out on this machine, you can have this. So it's always on your shelf, ready to go. And this is on the website already, ready to, on the ready to order? Ready to order, ready exactly. Order. Yep. Sounds great. Um, is there anything else I'm missing on this machine that I did not cover? You know, other than the fact that, you know, outside of the link plate and everything, another big thing that we've done with this machine too, is we've re 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 rewritten the PLC program on this machine. And we've also gone ahead and taken the HMI and completely rewrote that as well. So that for one, it's in English, it's 100% designed to us. And by rewriting all the programs, it gives us 100% control of this dryer. We can control everything from the temperature to the belt speed to how much powder drops to the shaking strength, um, how fast the pickup roll is. Everything that you need to operate this machine, we give you ultimate control over it, which is really, really nice as well. Good. Do you, by any chance, know the footprint of this machine? Um, what somebody can expect? So, realistically, when you need about 15 by 12 D, it's going to be about your area. Okay. And that's going to give you enough area to work around the machine, 
um, be able to access the, the, the tray to come out to access your powder, mm -hmm. to open the side door over there. The technician would have to come out. He's going to have room to be able to get around and work on it as well. So it doesn't need a huge footprint, but you do need to have a little bit of an area. And is there that. training that's involved? Yes. So it's part of the package when you buy the machine. Uh -huh. and this is another huge thing as well. A technician does come out, installs the machine, does training on site with all the employees that are going to be involved with it. Then we are also offering classes in Chicago as well. Where you would come out to Chicago, you would spend two days with myself, and I will go over a lot of the same stuff that's covered on site, but we'll get a lot more in depth with it and a lot more hands on as well with the machine. You know, we'll take the covers off and replace stuff and this and that. And that's going to be a big thing that's going to help the longevity of the machine. Great. And you guys have tutorials online too in case. Yeah, we're starting to build those on. right now. We've got a couple that are just going to release and we're going to be building more in the near future. We're looking at probably doing about one a week. Okay, great. Um, and it's going to be basic stuff from like loading film, replacing filters, replacing a damper, how to set up your HMI. Um, recycling the powder, things like that. Okay, great. And what kind of software are you guys using? Um, it's so the software that we have, it's, it's powered by Caldera, and it is designed specifically for us. Okay. So um, it's a one-and-done software for us. You have the ability to size your image, place your image. You can rotate it. You have white control in the rib software. You have choke control. You can nesting features that are in the software. Um, basic profiling abilities as well are in there also. So to... This is just a one program that does everything. Exactly. You no longer have to create a, another layer in Photoshop or anything Nothing like that. Nothing like that. So okay. you'll take your, your, your artwork, mm -hmm. you'll design it in Photoshop, Illustrator, Corel Draw, whatever you're going to use. You'll save it as a PNG file with a transparent background. You'll bring it into the RIP software and it handles it from there. Does everything there. It does everything there. And, and one of the things which is uh, that caught my attention as, as I was walking by as well is there's an ink stir in the back? Correct. Yeah. I mean, so, it's not a huge thing. We, we call thing, it the hot dog roller. That's yeah. what I like to call it. Over yeah, here. It's not a huge thing, but it's something that caught my attention because we always stir and mix our white ink yeah. because that is one of the main things that gets clogged up and it all, all everything separates to, over time. So yes. this is a nice, nice feature. That's just an added bon bonus. Yep. Put it on there and add a bit of shift when you're about to change your white ink. I guess you just pop it in. And, that's, it and the nice thing with it is too, so... You should always be shaking your rigs before you go ahead and put them in there, but you don't have to aggressively shake it yeah. now and create all the air pockets and everything like that. That constantly stays mixing. So what I do is I just do a quick little once two, pour it into the machine, and I'm set. Good. Can you put a hot dog there for lunch as well? I mean, if no? you would like, <laughs> you, you definitely can. I'd maybe take the ink off first, <laughs> but you could. Is there sensors here as well? So do we, we do have level sensors that are okay. in here. They're right now they're battery operated. Okay. We're looking at maybe upgrading those in the future. But yeah, once they're on there, it's just a, a standard float sensor when it reaches a certain level, a buzzer's gonna go off and the lights can actually light up so you know which one's going on. Same all the way across the board. And then in a white tank over here, this is for the re white recirculation. Yep. It comes back into the tank. And then this is the stirring mechanism that actually keeps all your whiting stirred up inside the tank as well. Awesome. And then you see here too, we do filters. So we filter the egg before it actually goes all the way through the damper and the vrin pad. Oh, good. Well guys, Thanks again for sharing everything with us, Marco. This machine definitely caught our eye. It's definitely going to be something that people are going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. I'll drop a contact information below in case you want to get a hold of them and also ask any more questions. Again, thank you for your time. Thank that you. was great coverage, so thank you. Perfect. Perfect. All right.